everybody, it's Andy from the SA Survival. What I want to go through today is just some of the modifications that we've done to reflection already. So I found the power source. This is the replacement, the lithium one I purchased. And that is the one that I've just taken out. So it's a progressive dynamics. I actually thought it was a WFCO and it's not. But I checked the serial numbers the 9200 series and it is compatible with from progressive dynamics the uh, 9160al and this is the lithium box so very easy to rewire just a positive and a negative black being positive white being negative uh, a ground cable at the very back a copper cable right there and then the power cord which is this black cable right here and it plugs right in, plugs right in, right there at the back of the power board inside of the trailer. So a very, very easy install other than lying on my back in the hold and a very quick removal of the trim piece that is just behind me. I don't know if you can see it right here, it's two screws and this thing moved out. Not the most elegant of wiring or plumbing anywhere in here just a quick inside view there's the furnace and then right back there i don't think you can see it that's the hot water on demand at the back there but 15 minutes and it was all installed it's perfect with the charge converter that i took out of the reflection this is the non-lithium charger. I um, had some cables kicking around. And so what I did is I just installed them into the outputs of the um, 12 volt on the charge controller. Use this plug obviously to go into 110 and I've gained a household battery charger. And if we can see here somewhere, you can see there. So 13 volts, 1000 watts uh and the, the output is 13.6 60 amps so i've got a 60 amp battery charger for normal lead acid agm batteries and i think that's going to work well in the shed to help do other projects in the future a couple of simple mods that we've done already is we added a circuit breaker for the solar panel okay i'll put a link down below to what that is we put the Victron smart shunt in here, Bluetooth, so we can see what the power is being consumed. And right now I've put a small 70 amp uh, lithium ion battery in here. I put this in because we've already uh, put in the lithium battery charger and it didn't really show specs for charging a normal battery. So rather than destroy the lead acid 100 amp that it came with, yes, 100 amp lead acid battery, tiny thing, which wouldn't do anything for us. Um, I put this in temporarily because we are going to put new uh, batteries inside of it. One thing that I'm not super happy about on our new trailer is the fact that our jacks are right behind the rear wheels. And I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see here, the rear jacks are right behind the rear wheels. I was more worried about the debris coming off of the wheels onto the actual stanchion here and pitting them and creating a mess, making them go rusty very early. And as you can see here, the bottom of the stanchion is right there. I've actually added this PVC tube. It's about 16 inches from down here. And what I've done that for is to protect the metal stanchion from getting debris hit. And how did I do that? I just slit the tube down the center on the back side about half an inch to three quarters of an inch. That's the tube itself. I just wanted to give you a quick update on those stanchion protectors. You can see the debris, we just arrived a little bit of ice and slush from the campsite but this is from the highway 
Now all that debris, there's the top of that pipe that I was saying. All that debris is on here. And it's quite nice to see that they're doing their job already. I cannot take the credit for this. My stepson did it. Uh, I built it. He came up with the theory of protection. He said, hey, why don't you do that? And I'm like, you know what? That's a good idea. So very simple hack, if you want to call it that, to protect your rear jack stanchions from being pitted and rusted. And again, I can pull them off at any time to clean whatever's under there. And also when we come to sell it, they'll still look new. So I'm in the process of putting two of these in. Uh, they're going to have to go like a T. So this one's going to go over there in the position it's in. And this one is going to go this way. And I'll show you the finished product afterwards. I've just mounted a bit of wood in there to mount them to. I have this angle aluminum, which I'm going to put in there. Don't worry about the bracket there. I'm just trying to fathom some stuff out. I had to disconnect a couple of wires. And there's one going to be there and there'll be another one right here. And I'll show you that once it's finished. So battery number one in and I put a strap in because these are a little bit short in height. And when I rocked the battery, it did move. So I had a strap kicking around and I've incorporated that in there as well. And at the very far end, there is a, I'm not going to be able to see it very well, but there is a, a sort of a eye bar or eye beam lip here. And I put some of this uh, corrugated plastic stuff on the beam this way so it wouldn't rub on the battery as well. And then the back is all clear of uh, everything down here. Sorry about the lighting. Uh, the batteries are disconnected, so my lights are off, but uh, that's all the power down here. So I have to leave a bit of a gap from there. And then I've had to put two pieces of wood in here because the batteries are just a hair longer than this bay but this section right here is actually on a bit of an angle so um, by putting two pieces of wood in there it's raised it up enough that the battery will fit perfectly in here now wedged and then I just need to put a another piece of angle aluminum in here and hopefully it will stay where it needs to be but we'll check that out shortly it's not quite finished yet but this will be tied up against here where the handle is, dropped down, propped in nice and tight, and then just placed right now the angle aluminum. And then I'm gonna put my Victron Smart Shunt probably here, because I'm gonna put a couple of um, like grommets uh, in here for the uh, power that I'm gonna put from the back of the truck. That's gonna come up, it's gonna be uh, power and ground, onto the negative on the Victron Smart Shunt, and then I'm gonna have my big 400 amp uh, T-fuse, which is gonna be mounted right there. And then obviously power to power, negative to negative. And then I believe it's gonna go uh, power to the fuse and negative to the shunt. But I'll show you all that when it's done, because obviously we want to have the power go through the batteries. But uh, I like it so far. And I still needed a bit of room because I gotta get the table in there and unfortunately I can't get my big table in it sucks a little bit but I think I need power more than I need the big table in this bay anyway just making my own copper connections so making these fit here so just beating it onto one end and you can see right there it's actually got the copper strands above the pinch which is good so it's not coming out and now I will just flatten down the end and one that I've already already made yes I've not drilled the hole in them yet but using the punch rather than the soldered method with this guy right here seems to be doing seems to be doing an okay job and then I got to put some heat shrink on which I've ran out of and the other end, which is, oh, I drilled one already just to see what it would look like. This is the first one I've done, sort of a prototype, um, slightly a bit big with this half inch copper pipe, but it's working out so far. 
I was thinking about this aluminum cable, but I've read so much about aluminum and copper, the corrosive side, so I've abandoned this idea. Um, I've also got some high voltage car automotive copper cable too. Um, I created a cable like this. Looks thicker than it is. And that is because it's got an inner case for insulation monitoring on motor vehicles and I've got it down to the copper core but I think this is going to be a little bit too thin for um, the application that I want to do. We'll see what they look like after. So I made a whole pile of these battens made to measure. There's two right here. These are going to be the lids to the uh, battery tops. I've uh, made insulation for them because it, it does get cold here and I don't want to ruin the lithium ion cells and this was a piece of insulation that Sandra got from work uh, it was perfect size I managed to cut it all out uh, and make several sides and some of them I had to do with um, bubble wrap so I am losing the light now it's getting a bit dark uh, here's one of the sides then I've got the bubble wrap in here and one side here, excuse the headlight, another one down there, one in the back here, and then these, obviously with the metal up, will fit. Like so, and then this one will fit. Once the cables have been moved out of the way, it will fit in there as well. And that's just to give it some insulation in the winter time. And this is the Reflectix that I, I wrapped around this side because I hadn't got enough room. As you can see, this is quite thick to put down here. And I did not want to take away from any more room inside of here. So that's what it's gonna look like. That's the insulation done. Um, I still got a couple of cables that I need to make into the various areas and I haven't got enough connectors to do that just yet. Once that's done, now we'll show you the completed project. Hey everybody, so I managed to get the battery stuff finished. Yee and I'm really, really happy, as you can hear the chirp in the background from Sandra, that she's happy too. Um, let me just go over the finished product before we do anything. What I've got going on here is we have the 400 amp T-Fuse, I've got the main battery power coming in and then I've got two trailer powers coming in as well. Actually, that is wrong. They are coming out. The main battery power is coming in from the very top up here. So what we've got going on is this one and this other red one here is for the trailer power. The black one that's underneath of here goes towards our DC-DC converter. This now goes underneath uh, and up through two grommets just down here and they come up to our power and ground. We have our Victron smart shunt here as well. So our Victron smart shunt, we have our ground to chassis here. We also have two grounds on here. This is the trailer ground and then the other ground again comes to the DC-DC converter. This goes to the back of the trailer. The other advantage of this connection is be that I can put the mobile 100 panel solar anywhere around our campsite, even though we're going to eventually have 565 watts of solar on the roof. Now let's take this apart and I'll give you a bit of an idea of what's going on. Now the wiring is finished to the point where I need to do two things. As you probably can see, some of the ends are not insulated. I have to get some uh, heat shrink and finish that off, tag them with the red and the black for power and ground, and from there, I'm going to put some extra of this uh, corrugated plastic over these cables to stop any chafing that might arise. I don't think there will be. So I'm going to take the insulation off that we've done. As you can see now, we've got all the insulation. You could only put Reflectex on here because there's not enough room on the door to put this stuff on here. I put a quick buckle on now. I change it around. You take the lid off. Take the side panels off of this one. I can also do the same on here. Take this panel off and this panel. So we can now see both batteries. 
got our ground coming in to one side of our battery. We've got a jumper ground going to the other battery. We have our power source, which is going to go over to, I'm going to figure this one out. Where's it going to go? So this battery, so this is the jumper. And then this cable goes up to the 500, uh, sorry, goes to the 400 amp uh, T fuse. Like I said, they look the same color. That's because they are, I will be identifying them with heat shrink, red and black to do that. And again, this corrugated plastic to stop any of this from uh, getting chafed on. And stuff like this will get a couple of clamps to secure it to the bulkhead. That's our overview of our batteries. I'm hoping that they'll stay even warm. These covers will probably be taken off as of spring because I don't want to insulate them from the heat. The heat will be perfectly fine with the nose cap of the fifth wheel. Uh, it's more so for the cold weather. We'll let you know how this all goes um, a bit later on when we go out to our winter camp in February. The advantage here is I can disconnect the solar so it's not going to charge these batteries when it's down below zero degrees. And I can turn the kill switch off inside of the front hold to turn the power from the shore power charging these batteries up as well. Now, if we have a look over here, this is what I have done is I've installed the small table. I've got my step ladder behind here because of some portions of the trailer I might need to get to like the front nose cone that I can't get to from the roof. Small table, some small stools and just some extra uh, small items that we've been able to move from the front compartment. So it's looking a lot tidier now than it was before and I'm more impressed already. What I have done now is I've propped up my uh, shovel and in the corner here you can probably just see it hidden between this sort of insulation layer and the body of the trailer I've put in our slightly taller axe. Just some hidden compartments that I found in here that I could store stuff make things a lot better. And so I have managed to repurpose quite a bit of the cabling that I've acquired over the last couple of months. Uh, I've got the plastic guide there protecting the wiring harness in orange and I've also got one here in black and then I've put the recycled conduit in orange and black on all of the lines here just to stop chafing because we've got quite a bit of an area here that could chafe and as you can see so that should all be good protection now. They've all been heat shrinked. You can see the red, the black. So we're all good there now. And that pretty much ends this project. I'll show it what it looks like with the covers all on. So I did end up putting some more insulation here and this piece right here, uh, just to give it some extra. I did have a bit of that left over and that is the finished product. Hopefully all the batteries will be good now. Once we get the extra solar on the roof, everything will be good. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget, please subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you liked the video. Survive to be alive. Mm -hmm.